Ohio is a state with an industrial legacy. As the historical center of steel production in the United States, and still a major producer of rubber products, plastics, refined chemicals, and agricultural goods, Ohio is no stranger to factories and commercial farmland. As a result, many of these industries have used and continue to use chemicals in their production processes, and they generate a variety of waste materials, some of which are hazardous. Thanks to modern state and federal environmental regulations, things like dumping toxic waste and accidental releases of hazardous materials into the environment are controlled today in order to protect the health and well-being of the public, and known hazardous sites are being cleaned up. But new releases do still happen, and historical waste can cause problems for many years, even decades, after it's dumped or spilled. One of the most emerging environmental health problems in Ohio today? Vapor intrusion. To understand, let's take a look at a typical industrial Ohio community. Here we can see a factory that's located near a residential area. This factory produces plastic products and routinely uses metal degreaser to clean its machinery. One day, there is a spill, and a large amount of degreaser is released into the environment through the soil around and beneath the factory. This degreaser is part of a large family of chemicals known as volatile organic compounds, or VOCs. VOCs evaporate, or turn into gas, easily, and include chemicals like benzene, formaldehyde, TCE, PCE, xylene, and many others. VOCs can have many industrial uses and can even be found in products in our homes. Common products such as paint, paint thinner, hobby glues, solvents, gasoline, cigarette smoke, mothballs, air fresheners, dry cleaned clothing, and new carpeting can all contain VOCs. Once in the soil, the spilled degreaser chemical begins seeping down toward the groundwater level. Groundwater is fresh water that is contained in an underground layer of rock, gravel, or sand. Just like water above the surface of the ground, groundwater flows downhill. When the spilled chemical reaches the groundwater level, it will begin moving downhill too. The mixing of chemicals in groundwater is known as the plume. Take a moment to notice that there is more chemical underneath the factory where the spill happened, and less as the plume travels towards the house at the western edge of the neighborhood. Remember, we know that the degreaser that was spilled in our example is a volatile organic compound, a VOC, and VOCs evaporate easily. VOCs in groundwater behave the same way as VOCs on the surface. They want to evaporate. If VOCs in groundwater move under a porous patch of loose gravel, sand, or silt, their vapors will begin traveling upwards. If a building, like these homes in our example, happen to be above a plume, then the vapors will be able to make their way upwards through tiny cracks and imperfections in the foundation of a home, whether the building rests on a crawl space, a slab, or a basement. Through these imperfections, the vapors enter the indoor air. This is vapor intrusion. When talking about chemicals and your health, an important term to understand is exposure. Exposure is when a person swallows, touches, or breathes in a harmful chemical. With vapor intrusion and VOCs, breathing is the way a person will be exposed to gaseous chemical vapors. You might be wondering, can I get sick from exposure to harmful chemicals through vapor intrusion in my home? The answer is yes. You and your family can get sick from breathing harmful vapors from VOCs in your indoor air. But getting sick will depend on how much chemical you are exposed to, or dose, how long you are exposed to the chemical, or duration, and how often you are exposed, or frequency. Your general health, age, and lifestyle all play a role in whether or not exposure to chemicals can make you sick. Babies, the elderly, and people with chronic health problems are more at risk of getting sick. VOC vapors at very high levels can cause a strong odor. Some people may have eye and respiratory irritation, headache, or an upset stomach. These symptoms will usually go away when the person is moved to fresh air. Lower levels of vapors may go unnoticed and a person may feel no health effects. In this case, they may not know there is a problem and can be exposed for many years. Exposure to some VOCs for a long duration of time has been known to cause cancer and birth defects. Keep in mind, 
there are lots of different chemicals in the VOC family, and each can have a slightly different effect on your health. If you have been notified by an agency like the Ohio Department of Health, the Ohio Environmental Protection Agency, or the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency that there is a possible vapor intrusion problem in your community, the best thing you can do to protect yourself and your family is allow access to your home to be sampled. If a specialist asks to sample for vapor intrusion, they will usually take two kinds of samples. The first is called a sub-slab sample. This sample is taken from below your home's foundation and it tests to see if chemical vapors have made it into the soil just below your home. If vapors are detected under your home in levels high enough to cause concern, the specialist will then usually ask to take an indoor air sample to know whether the vapors have moved through cracks in your home's foundation into your indoor air. Say the samples show you have a vapor intrusion problem. What then? If vapor intrusion is having an effect on the air inside your home, the most common solution is to install a sub-slab depressurization system, which is very similar to the type of system used to commonly remove radon from homes. This is a system that prevents gases in the soil from entering your home and mainly consists of a pump to create suction and a pipe for venting the contaminants out of the home. The installer will drill a hole into your home's foundation large enough to allow a pipe to enter the soil below your home. This will also give a place for the vapors in the soil to be released and collect. Piping will be inserted into the hole and will be well sealed where it connects to the floor to prevent any vapors from escaping. The pipe will be exited through a wall or ceiling to the outside. The piping will be connected to a vent fan. Finally, a system monitor is installed to ensure that your system is working properly. Once it's turned on, the fan will pull the vapors out of the soil under your home, up through the piping, and out into the outdoor air through the exit pipe. Vapors in the outside air will quickly be broken down by sunlight. The cost to maintain and operate this type of system is typically minimal, similar to running a small fan. As needed, specialists will return to your home to take additional samples to ensure that your system is working to reduce the amount of vapors below your home to levels below the recommended thresholds. Vapor intrusion can be a threat to your health and the health of your family, but the good news is that you can protect yourself. For more information on the toxic effects of vapor intrusion and how to protect your health, the Ohio Department of Health is here to answer your questions. Please visit our website or contact us for more information.